I have a video for you by Infographics is the name of the YouTube channel. And the title of the video is Vegans vs. Meat Eaters. So let's check it out. We've all experienced it. We invite a friend to dinner only to learn that she is the dreaded V word. We have a vague sense of what it means, but we're left with so many questions. Is it healthier? Will you sit on my leather couch? Can we still go to Taco Bell? In a world of health magazines and- All great questions. Planet Fitness commercials, many people want to learn more about nutrition and which diets are the healthiest. Wherever you go, no one can escape the growing vegan phenomenon. So we thought it would be fun to explore it further in this episode of the infographic show, Vegans vs. Meat Eaters. A vegan is someone who follows a diet that contains no animal meat, fish, eggs, dairy products, or any other food that comes from animals. They differ from vegetarians who generally still eat dairy and eggs as part of their diets. Vegans also typically abstain from using any other products that come from animals such as honey and leather jackets. Back in 2008, vegans only accounted for around 0.5% of the US population or about 1 million people. As of polls taken in 2014, vegans now make up roughly 2.5% of the population, at least in the United States. Women seem to be far bigger fans of veganism, making up around 79% of vegans. The so what they're saying is women are just smarter, I guess. The number of meat eaters obviously far outweighs the number of vegans throughout the world, with the highest concentration of vegans being in Israel at only around 5% of their population. By not consuming any animal products, vegans follow a dietary path similar to an herbivore. Herbivores are animals that feed exclusively on plants, such as cows, giraffes, and adorable deer. Meat eaters are typically omnivores, which means that they eat both plants and animals. The term comes from the Latin words omni, meaning all or everything, and the word vorare, which means to devour. So, basically, omnivores are down to eat whatever. Most meat eaters don't solely eat just meat, like a carnivore would do, that is, unless you're Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. Then it's beautiful bacon and sizzling steaks all day. So humans are widely thought of as natural omnivores, but some believe that humans are at their optimal health when following the dietary habits of an herbivore. People often cite potential health benefits and ethical dilemmas as the main reasons to go on a vegan diet. We won't get into the ethics today, but we are curious about the health differences between vegans and their meat-eating friends. People on a vegan diet tend to be leaner. In a cross-sectional study of nearly 40,000 adults, meat-eaters had the highest mean body mass index, or BMI. Vegetarians were in the middle, and vegans had the lowest. Based on several studies from Finland, some scientists have suggested that vegan diets may be helpful in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Vegans also appear to have lower rates of hypertension than both meat eaters and vegetarians. So right now where they're going over the all of the, the health issues that non-vegans have, I, I really think that this is extremely important because, and I really love that they're tackling the health component of, of being vegan as opposed to the ethical component because... I know a lot of people aren't necessarily ready to hear the ethical component. However, everyone has blood results that they have to get annually, or at least they should. And a lot of times they have no idea why they'll have high cholesterol, or, or they do know why they have a high cholesterol, because they'll say it's hereditary. And that might be the case. However, as I've told you in plenty of other videos, you can change those hereditary curses by just making simple dietary changes. So let's keep watching. Vegans also typically have lower cardiometabolic risks for conditions like heart disease or strokes. The problem, however, doesn't seem to be with meat itself, but rather with the quality of meat. Recent findings have found that coronary heart disease problems do not seem to be linked with red meat and saturated fats like previously thought, but rather with processed meats. Based on a study of nearly 1.25 million people, consumption of processed meats, not simply red meat, was associated with higher rates of coronary heart disease. From an evolutionary standpoint, meat-eating omnivores also seem to be the reason behind the growth of our larger, more intelligent brains. This is the result of the higher protein content associated with meat consumption. The American Dietetic Association, or ADA, states that the protein from plants can easily meet and exceed protein requirements, and that being an omnivore merely increases the amount of protein sources a person can have by... So let me just make one thing clear, though. When it comes to plant-based protein versus animal protein, you know, this is coming from a 100% plant-based person. Animal protein is superior in the, um, in the amount of amino acids. The amino acid profile is full when it comes to animal protein versus plant-based protein. However, when you combine those plant-based proteins, like for example, hemp and pea protein or chickpeas and rice or beans and rice, that gives you the complete the complete amino acid profile. So I think that's extremely important. 
Oh, by the way, and if you appreciated that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. But I, that is really important, especially for those of us who work out and hit the gym. It's just not as simple as just removing meat from your diet and then just eating plant-based protein like beans or rice. You need to combine those proteins in order to get the full amino acid profile. So although I am definitely pro this video so far, I just want to, you know, emphasize a few factors, right? Because it's just not as simple as, you know, just eating plant-based protein and you're going to look exactly the way you look now. Um, however, the health components without question are superior when it comes to a plant-based diet. By including animal meat. Obviously, protein is important to both bone health and muscle mass. One study even found that women who ate meat had higher amounts of muscle mass than their vegetarian counterparts, even if the protein intake was the same. While there certainly may be some health advantages in going vegan, there seems to be some common deficiencies in the diet. One of these deficiencies is with- See, just spoke about that, right? With the vitamin B12. The ADA states that there are no natural plant foods that contain any significant amount of the vitamin. Vegans can still get it, but they need to take a vitamin or consume fortified foods like soy milk and certain breakfast cereals. So definitely take a vitamin B supplement if you are a vegan, and you should probably get your vitamin B uh, your vitamin B12 checked even if you eat meat just to make sure that your levels are within range. Omega-3 fatty acids are also very difficult to come by in a vegan diet but this can be overcome through the consumption of algae supplements. With vegans requiring supplementation to meet their nutritional needs, it supports the claim that veganism is unnatural, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's unhealthy. At this point, some of you may be wondering which diet leads to longer lifespans. For that information, we turn to Okinawa. The traditional Okinawan diet is typically regarded as the best for health and longevity, with the Okinawan islands having the greatest concentration of centenarians in the world. An archipelago hundreds of miles off the coast of Japan, Okinawa has about 740 centenarians out of its population of 1.3 million people. While their diets have been changing recently due to globalization and factors like fast food chains, the traditional Okinawan diet is made up of large amounts of plant-based carbohydrates. Although they are primarily vegans, traditional Okinawans still eat meat on special occasions, usually pork, as well as small amounts of fish on a weekly basis. This doesn't prove that small amounts of animal products are vital to good health, but it does hint that the optimal human diet can be achieved without going completely vegan. That said, many health organizations, including the ADA, state that well-planned vegan diets are healthy and nutritionally adequate and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. It seems like no matter what your dietary preferences are, a healthy lifestyle can be achieved on or off a vegan diet. Are you or would you ever consider becoming a vegan? Why or why not? Let us know down in the comments below. So that is really a great question. I mean, when it comes to being vegan, I, it really does matter, for example, why are you becoming vegan? Are you becoming vegan because you dislike the treatment and killing of animals or are you becoming vegan because you want to have an optimal way or a more optimal health health or lifestyle? I, those are really important questions because it's not necessarily the easiest diet to to really um, just just successfully continue for the rest of your life unless you plan. Um, you know, a lot of people get into trouble. They say, hey, "I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna go vegan for a month and ah, I'm just I'm gonna just gonna continue it." But if they don't plan, then sometimes they'll say, "Oh, I'm a little hungry." And well, that's because you didn't necessarily look at a lot of the plant based options that were available to you. You just thought you can just remove the meat from your diet and you can just eat kale all day. Doesn't work that way. So always plan, but no question, the plant-based diet is the most optimal diet. And when it does come to your blood results, you know, and also what this video was suggesting was, or is, that you could live an optimal lifestyle by eating a little bit of meat or maybe a little bit of fish and plant-based. So I would say that there are people out there who most definitely can do this, but the majority of us cannot because we're humans, right? And although we definitely mean well, a lot of times we say that we're going to eat a certain way or we tell someone else like me, I hear all the time, oh, I eat healthy, Ty, I eat, you know, I eat, you know, I eat this and I eat that. And, oh, it's the healthiest. Oh, oh yeah, Ty, I went to the, to the doctor the other day. My blood results are perfect. Then I'll ask, well, what were the numbers of your cholesterol or your blood pressure? Uh, I don't know. There's a reason why you don't know. It's probably because you didn't want to find out. So, you know, when it comes to having a, a balanced diet, you know, if you want to eat meat, if you want to eat fish, I'm not against that at all. I'm just against those individuals who claim that they have the healthiest diet when in actuality, 
their own blood work is not great and then they pass on that information to other people. So that's really what I want to discuss. I do you know, feel that this is a great video. It's really good to hear someone else's perspective on longevity. It just makes sense to me, right? If your blood results are great and there's nothing else really um, kind of um, exacerbating morbidity within your body, then you're going to live as long as possible in the vegan diet, or I should say the plant-based, healthy plant-based lifestyle really is conducive for that type of outcome. So there you go. Once again, Green Regimen, Tyshawn here with you. Please like this video, subscribe. We'll see you next time.